two options, which is essentially just merging two arrays. So we, uh, okay, so let me start from the beginning. This is mentioned in other tutorials, but I'll go ahead and mention it again. We are just setting a default value from from. However, if the options are set, we want to go ahead and merge settings with options, i.e. the option that's provided inside of here we want to overwrite this value with, so this will become 10 in the case that we've provided it as 10 here. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and alert out uh, this setting just to make sure I've got it right. This is just something I always do. So I'm gonna alert out from, settings from, because remember we're working with an array here. Let's go and refresh. You can see that it says 10. This is the value that we did provide here. If I go ahead and change this to three, for example, and refresh, we get the value three. So we know that this uh, value here is being sent through options. It's then overriding this value here. So it's changing it here, whatever we provide. And then we're just alerting that out. So we'll get rid of that for now. We don't actually need that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and create the actual functionality of the countdown. And then we'll go ahead and provide the callback function uh, a bit later on. So um, the first thing I want to do is just up of here, because we're using um, this, either this selector inside of a um, function in a minute, we want to select uh, or create a this selected variable, and that's just going to equal this. And that's so we can just use this variable here uh, inside a function down here, which we're going to create. And this is called countdown execution so inside of this function we're going to run the code over and over again by using an interval uh, and we're using this selected because we need uh, this to be global hopefully that makes sense if you know about global and local functions uh, or variables sorry uh, the scope of variables then this will make sense um, so inside uh, the countdown execution um, or rather outside first of all we want to set the current value so the current value that we're starting the counter at and this is settings and from so we're starting at for example 10 inside countdown execution we want to reduce this value by one each time so current is equal to current minus one quite simple uh, what we then want to do is place the place the current value inside um, this selected so this will equal this because we're using it in the function ie this countdown div um, so we want to go ahead and say this underscore selected remember we're using this outside of here because it's now global um, dot text current so now at the moment because we just have this function here we're not actually calling the function at all if we go ahead and call countdown execution and refresh, you can see that 10 has been put into this div. So that's worked, but we actually want to run this every one second because we want the value to increase by one every one second. So we create an interval and we call this, or, or we create an interval using set interval, and we call this interval. So interval equals set interval. Inside here, we give the function name without the uh, without the parentheses, so countdown exec, and then 1,000 for 1,000 milliseconds, i.e. every second. So every second, this function here is going to be run using this here, uh, and then we are reducing the value by one every time and placing it inside this selected, which is this, which is this countdown div. So quite a uh, sort of complicated to explain, but now when we run it you can see that the value uh, comes down every time. Now the only problem we have here is that we don't have a way to stop this. So you'll see that when once it gets to zero, it will go into minus one, minus two, minus three, blah, blah, blah. So what we want is a check inside of this function to check when it equals zero. So we say if current is equal to zero, then the first thing we want to do is stop the execution of this interval. So we want to uh, clear the interval. So we say clear interval, and then we specify the name of the interval. And we gave the interval name as just interval. So we type in interval. And then after this, we want to send the callback uh, function ready, if you like. Now I'll write this, and then I'll explain what we're doing. callback.call this. 
So essentially what this means is this callback here is our callback function and we've said callback.call so we've sent uh, a call back to this uh, this here and then we've provided just this inside. So now callback is obviously a parameter in here so we can go and define it. So we've created a callback function as we would with any other jQuery um, any other jQuery function if you like or plugin or, or set of uh, tools and now inside of here we can like alert done and because when it's got to zero we clear the interval because obviously we don't need the countdown to continue then we send the callback um, you know as this so we send the callback as sort of done if you like which is our callback thing here which is we've sort of supplied in here and then we alert out done so let's go ahead and refresh nearly 100 minus 100 there so as it counts down we obviously take a look at this code and uh, you know it's counting down as we specified but when it gets to zero uh, we send the callback and then we execute the block of code that we specified as our callback function here so ie like I showed in the beginning we could say window uh, location equals something dot code at UK or blah 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 a web address so we've taken a look at how we can obviously supply a plugin with uh, parameters or, or options or settings whatever you'd like to call them uh, as we've seen in other tutorials however we've now looked at creating a callback function and using callback dot call callback being the name here dot call uh, and sending the fact that or, or sending this um, as itself essentially so we know when this has completed uh, and then when it has completed we execute everything within the callback function block so that's how we create callback functions in our jQuery plugins